everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com. I'm back here with part three of how to crush the micro stakes for YouTube. Um, so in the first two videos, I talked about how to get max value. Uh, we talked about all, we looked at a bunch of hands where we got big value and just how to bet big against these bad players at these limits, the very lowest stakes. Um, and as promised, um, in this part and the next one, I'm going to talk about uh, getting away, losing the least, essentially. Um, so I might have mentioned in the first part or the second part, probably, that the two keys really to crushing the micro stakes are uh, number one, getting the most value out of your hands, which we've already covered. So uh, you can go check out part one and two if you haven't seen those yet. Um, and also, you know, what I'm going to talk about today, which is losing the least. You know, I mean, they're obviously both uh, equally important. Um, and I think that uh, a lot of the b reasons, that, uh, the, the biggest two reasons that people don't have success at these stakes are uh, primarily because of those two issues. Um, so let's dive right into it here. So once again, I just picked some hands sort of at random from uh, NL2, from they were played in the last year or two, um, where I folded. Uh, I don't, I didn't really even look at the hands. I, I, when I'm doing a replay or uh, video like this, I don't really like to look at the hands so that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't remember anything. So I'm, it's almost like I'm, I'm looking at the hand for the first time, so my thoughts are... Uh, um, sort of spontaneous. So let's get into this here. I've got Ace-10 suited uh, on the hijack here in a full ring table, uh, one cent, two cent. Uh, it's always good to, to, to look around. Uh, I'll just mention my HUD real quick. I'm going to go through four hands here, but uh, I'll still mention the, the HUD. I'll use this guy here, Villain38. Um, so 70 is the number of hands. 16 is the uh, the percentage of hands that he plays, uh, otherwise known as VPIP. Uh, zero is the preflop raise percentage. Three is the aggression factor, uh, which is a number which denotes uh, the amount of aggression uh, post-flop. Uh, generally, three and four are about average, I would say. Uh, one and two is passive, and anything uh, five and over is, is kind of insane. Uh, on the second row, I have uh, fold to steal, fold to three bet, and three bets. And then on the uh, the third row, we have um, uh, how often uh, this player folds to a c-bet on the flop, turn, and river. And then the final row is how much or how often he makes a c-bet himself on the flop, turn, and river. Uh, as you can see, I do not have massive samples really on. T I've got 586 hands on this guy, but um, pretty much everybody else, you're looking at about 50, maybe 100 at the very most on some of these players because I don't really play NL2 that much anymore. So. Uh, a lot of the stats sort of uh, in the, the last three rows are not really going to be applicable unless we're up against uh, somebody who we, we have like 500 plus hands on like this uh, because you just need a bigger sample to be able to uh, uh, gauge, you know, what, what somebody's seabed on the turn or river is, for instance. Uh, so a lot of times when I'm, when I'm talking, especially with these hands here, uh, we'll just be looking mostly at the top row with the... Uh, uh, VPIP, PFR, and aggression factor to just get an overall read of the, of the player type. Uh, we'll also be looking at stack size. It's always important. Uh, nobody who's any good really would ever buy in for less than 100 big blinds. It doesn't make sense because uh, if you think that you're a good player, you're one of the best players at the table, which you absolutely should be, or else why are you at that table? Um, why would you not want to have the most money available to win? It it's, makes no sense to like uh, just handicap yourself you know, uh, always, always buy in full. Uh, people who aren't buying in full, you can, de you can off almost always just see that they're, they're weaker players as well. Um, I don't know that I need to point that out. 38-0, uh, 15-5, weak reg there. Uh, let's go around, but 33-6, another, like, SLP fish type. Um, you know, pr pretty similar. Um, this guy is 16-0. Anyways, let's get into these hands here. So I've got Ace-10, once again, uh, suited on the cutoff, and we'll see what happens. Um, so a guy with a half stack, although he's got a weird, weird, really weird stat so far of 18, 18. Um, he uh, comes in for a mini res, which I mean, who knows what that can mean at NL2. Uh, guy's playing quite a few hands. He's raising with all of his hands. Um, so we'll see what we end up doing here. Uh, we so we do get a caller here, which makes it kind of. Uh, uh, it's kind of an, uh, enticing to just squeeze in this spot. We'll see what I do. I do, in fact, go for the squeeze. I think that just flatting here is fine because we have a, a, a good uh, a hand that plays really well, sort of in position. I don't mind allowing some bad players in the pot, um, and sort of being in in position with a hand that can make uh, 
excuse me, a pretty strong top pair and, and ov obviously a nut flush and a straight as well. So, uh, But I do choose to go for the squeeze this time, which I think is fine as well. Uh, we can see that Villain36 here, his fold to 3-bet is 100% uh, so far, but uh, I don't know if you can see that's a almost off screen there, but the opportunity is only one. He's only had one opportunity. Uh, maybe we can pull this up here. Uh, fold to three bet after raising uh, is 100%, but he's only had one opportunity. So we don't want to, you know, make a huge deal out of that. Oh my god, but it, it is something. He has folded to a three bet before. So, uh, we d anyways, we do squeeze here. We'll see what happens. Um, so he does, actually, Villain36 does f uh, fold again to, to a three bet, but we do get called by this... Uh, I don't know what you want to call that player. Thirty-six, twenty-four. It's 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 sort of an SLP, but sort of a a lag as well. Kind of a weird player type. Uh, it should be noted that we're both super deep here, uh, both about two hundred and fifty big blinds to start in hand. So we kind of flop fairly decent with a uh, uh, a gut shot, a backdoor flush draw, straight draw. So we, we kind of got stuff all over the place here. I, actually, I guess we're we'd be yeah we're double gutted actually. It's uh, yeah the king or or the eight. So. Um, so he checks to us, and we decide to go ahead and bet about two-thirds pot or something, which is pretty standard in this spot, and he makes the call. Um, turn is obviously not the best card in the deck for us. It com com completes, uh, completes the flush draw, not the one that we want. Um, other than that, it's a pretty harmless card, but uh, it really doesn't help us, obviously, in any way. Uh, so he leads into us for 30 cents, which is weird. Um, obviously, I mean, you can see at the top here we're getting like 4 to 1 uh, to make the call here. So we do have an up and down straight draw. We do have, uh, or double gutted, I should say. Um, and we do have a, you know, we do have two cards that if they make a pair, it's possible it'll be good. So probably the ace. We're not positive if we make a 10, it'll be good. So it's kind of a, a close spot, uh, but the thing is, is also like we could, it's it's possible that we're drawing dead here to a flush as well, so we have to consider that. I don't know what I do here. I do end up just folding. Um, I don't think it's the worst play in the world. I don't, I mean, I think this hand's actually a really good illustration of the fact that you don't have to, just because you're getting like a really good price in the pot, uh, it doesn't mean that you need to go chase whatever you're chasing, you know. I mean, we technically, getting four to one, I mean, plus our ace possibly being good. Um, you know, we almost have the odds. We're also in position, which is nice. Uh, we we pretty much do have the odds to, to call at least here. Um, but you know what? You know, what? I, something I always talk about, especially at NL2, NL5, is just, you know what? You don't have to get involved in these, these silly kind of spots. Uh, your image is not important at all at these stakes. So, like, uh, the sort of like showing them that oh I can be in here with a with a straight draw or something means absolutely nothing to them so you don't have to be in there for image concerns or something like that um, a lot of times it's just better to get out early and just just save yourself the hassle you know it's it's just not worth like um, you know the the eight of diamonds falls on the on the river and he pots it and now what do we do <laughs> or something and dealing with these maniacs um, they love to just pull the big bluff and stuff like that. So often when I talk about it, these stakes is when you have one of these sort of mediocre hands, just get out of the way. It's it's honestly not going to make any difference at all to your win rate, whether you stick around or just fold in a spot like this. And a lot of people get stubborn and they're like, oh, I've got to see my draw to the end and he bets so little and... It's still, it doesn't matter. You gotta understand that it's razor thin here whether it's even a call or or a fold. It, it really makes no no difference. Uh, I don't think raise is a consideration here. Don't try to go over the heads of these guys in L2. That's just gonna be a nightmare. Let's move on to the next hand here. Uh, I've got 10 queen off. Um, I guess we're playing 7 handed here, so I'm kind of uh, hijack again though. Um, going to be a pretty typical isolation uh, raise here of a bad player, 49-10 as we can see. Raise it up, uh, he does call. Uh, so we flop a uh, gut shot, he checks to us, and so we make our typical super standard c-bet in this spot. Uh, when somebody checks to us and we have basically anything, uh, we're going to be betting against one player anyways. Uh, if we have something, which we do here, a gut shot, that's even better. So. Um, so we bet he decides to go for the old check mini raise. So, in a spot like this, uh, I mean, you could fold. It's, I mean, I just 
said that we don't need to get be getting involved in marginal spots like this, but I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to pull one off here for one simple fact, and that's because we're both, I mean, he's not, I'm super deep, but he's got at least a half, uh, sorry, a full stack to start the hand. So uh, he's given us pretty amazing odds here, four and a half to one, as we can see at the top, uh, to possibly spike our jack on the turn, and uh, we expect with a bad player like this, who probably has an ace of some sort, that um, there's a decent chance that we'll be able to get perhaps even his whole stack if we can hit our jack. So uh, we do, do decide to call and pull one off. Um, he bets uh, in on us on, on the turn, as we can see that our odds are quite a bit less now at 3 to 1. Um, you know, you should know that uh, that calling here is probably a poor idea. Once again, a spot where we don't need to be doing useless chasing here. I don't know what the odds against for a gut shot here. I mean, it's I mean you've got four outs, right? So it's not very good. Uh, it's probably like ten percent or something. One out of ten times you're you're gonna hit it. You're a ten you're ten to one against probably something like that. Maybe somebody can correct me. We're only getting three to one here. Uh, the math doesn't add up. This is a fold. Uh, let's move on. Uh, I've got five six on the button. Um, we've got another one of these bad players who limps in. Should be noted we're both mega deep in this hand. Uh, we do the standard isolation. Uh, he calls. We flop two pair on a somewhat dangerous board. He checks to us and we make our standard value bets. Um, this is a spot where I actually wouldn't mind sort of like an over bet even uh, or, or even just straight pot just because the board is so scary and there's so many cards that are going to suck on the turn for us. Uh, but the, it's okay to make a sort of 75% pot bet like we did here as well. Uh, he does call, and one of those bad cards, of course, comes on the turn. Um, so what's so? Let's see what he does. He does check to us. So what's important here is to not blast the pot here for no reason, just because. Oh my God, we have two pair. You got to look at the board. You got to understand that if he's got a seven, any seven in his hand, we're now beat. Um, so it really just doesn't make any sense to just ram more money into the pot here because he's only going to call I mean probably if he doesn't have that seven he's just going to fold you know if he's got like an ace six or an ace four or all those hands that we beat or something he's just going to fold them so there's really no point in betting at this point because we're only going to get action from better hands I and mean, we might get action from a flush draw of course but you know I mean that's only a small uh, portion of his range so we do indeed just check behind and hope to hit our full house on the river would be nice which we don't we get another horrific card, because now the flush draw got there as well. Uh, he bets out full pot, which donkeys like this love to do. Uh, guys, this should be a very, very easy fold. I hope it is for all you guys, so uh, make the fold there. Uh, last hand here is king nine off, and we're at a full-handed table, and I'm on the cutoff. So we get another one of these. Uh, this is actually a bad reg, a 19-3. Uh, you can see he's got almost a full stack. Uh, it's probably just going to be a standard isolation rain, raise. Sorry, eight cents, and uh, the big blind comes along as well when he's a fish. So we'll, s or actually, oh, sorry, the um, big blind comes along, the fish comes along, and the reg, the bad reg, folds. Okay, so we flop nothing, but we got two overs. Uh, villain checks to us. We make our standard c bets. Uh, he calls. Okay, so we pick up a gut shot on the turn. Another scare card, but once again, we want to we want to note that you know trying to use scare cards against bad players is typically a pretty uh, a poor idea because uh, a lot of times, again, we don't want to be trying to get over their heads and stuff. You gotta understand they're thinking at a very very basic level. They're only thinking about their hand. Uh, they're not thinking about like what's on the board and what we can possibly have. So we don't want to be like looking at cards and be like, oh, I can represent that, especially if it's an ace or something, because a lot of times they actually have the ace, the bad player. You're like, I'm going to represent that ace, and then it goes to showdown, and they show up with an ace. You're like, what the hell just happened? Don't try to do, like, uh, tricky stuff versus bad players. You're going to, it's going to be end up being bad for you, trust me. Check behind here, yeah, is what we do, and I'm sure the fish here is going to bomb the river, or, well, half pot anyways. Uh, we have no play here. Don't do some silly raise here or something like that. Just make the fold. Anyways, uh, I'm going to end the video here. I hope this is useful for you guys. Um, basically, the, the whole point here um, is to you know make decisive decisions on earlier streets. Cut your losses. Don't get in there chasing silly draws and stuff like that. Uh, just understand that when you're in these marginal hands, this is where a lot of people just spew so much money at these stakes. 
it, it's okay to just get out early, okay? Get rid of your ego in this game and, and don't worry about it. Just give them the friggin' pot. Who cares? I don't care if I got bluffed. Whatever. It's just a stupid donkey. Once I get the goods, I'm going to get his whole stack. That's how it works with these sticks. I uh, hope that was useful for you guys. Uh, it's been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com. Go check out the website. I got tons more articles, uh, books, all sorts of stuff on there. So, we'll be back next time. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.